Welcome to this class on art history. We will be learning about a very significant art movement in this session, Expressionism. Expressionism originated as a term used to denote the use of distortion and exaggeration for emotional effect which first surfaced in the art literature of the early 20th century. When applied in a stylistic sense, with reference in particular to the use of intense color, agitated brush strokes, and disjointed space. Expressionist movement can be found not only in the field of fine arts, but also in dance, cinema, literature, and the theater. The term expressionism has been traced to various sources. It may have been coined by Czech art historian. Antonin Medjak in 1910, whereas the Impressionists sought to express the majesty of nature, the Expressionists, according to Medjak, sought only to express inner life, often where the painting of harsh and realistic subject matter. But the term was always an easy one to use loosely and many did so to denote the various reactions against Impressionism in the late 19th century. But it is to be noted that no group named themselves to be Expressionistic. The term Expressionist was used during the Berlin session of 1911. A gallery hall was designated as Expressionist. The gallery contained works by French four artists like Matisse. It was by 1914 that the label was used to label a group German Expressionists. Expressionism also was not limited strictly to the field of painting. History of literature, drama, stage design, dance, film were changed by the impact of Expressionism. Expressionism emerged simultaneously in various cities across Germany as a response to a widespread anxiety about man's increasingly discordant relationship with the world, his lost feelings of authenticity and spirituality. In part a reaction against Impressionism and academic art, it was inspired most by the expressive and symbolist currents in late 19th century art. Works of Vincent van Gogh, the Norwegian symbolist Edward Munch, and Belgian painter James Enser proved particularly influential on the Expressionists and encouraged them to distort forms and employ strong colors to convey a variety of anxieties and yearnings. The classic phase of the movement lasted from approximately 1905 to 1920 and spread across Europe. Its influence would be felt throughout the century, not only in German art, but also in many movements like the American Abstract Expressionism. It was also important for the development of Neo-Expressionism in 1980s. There are two major groups in German Expressionism, the Brook, the Bridge in the city of Dresden and the Blow writer, the Blue Knight in Munich. German Expressionism also included pioneering efforts like the Weimar School and later developments like the New Objectivity Group. The Brook, the Bridge Group was formed in 1905 and in 1913 it was dissolved. The group of four German artists led by Ernst Ludwig Kitchener were members of this group. This is considered to be the founding organization for the German Expressionist movement. Along with Fritz Bleil, Karl Schmidt Rotloff, and Erich Haeckel, Kirchner established De Brücke as a youth oriented art movement that would challenge the traditional academic styles of fine art, which by that point included Impressionism and post Impressionism. The group published their manifesto in 1906. It was carved on wood. In September and October 1906, the first group exhibition was held, focused on the female nude. Emil Nold and Max Pechstein joined the group in the same year. 
Otto Muller during 1874 to 1930 joined the group in 1910. The woodcut as an artistic medium would go on to become very popular with the group whose inclination to strong expression was well served by the stark crude forms that the wood. The artists of the bridge group concentrated on imitating the styles originally practiced by the art communities of the Middle Ages. The Nazarene group who preceded the brook were also using woodcut to illustrate their biblical works. The bridge dominated the art scene through paintings that depicting social differentiation of classes, wealth, German nightlife and the chaos that reign in their cities. Other contemporary painters like Polo Mordson Becker and Christian Rolfs subscribed to the theory that their art should be as simplistic and down to earth as possible. They consciously omitted any demonstrations of personal emotions but their works show expressionistic vitality. Cathay Colwitz is another example. Rolfs was all 50 years old when he started to paint in expressionist style. His works were confiscated by the Nazis as degenerate art and was forbidden to paint. In 1911, that a group of young artists formed Der Blau Reiter, the Blue Rider in Munich, the name came from Vasily Kandinsky's Der Blau Reiter painting of 1903. Among their members were Kandinsky, Franz Mark, Paul Klee, Franz Mark and Auguste Mack. The group's formation was sparked by the rejection of the Kandinsky oil painting The Last Judgment during 1910 from a local exhibition. The painting contained swirling abstract forms and apocalyptic suggestions and was deemed too obscene for public display. Although De Blow writer never published a manifesto, its members were united by their high regard for medieval and primitivist art forms as well as their love of cubism and fauvism. The group also included Alexei Jolonsky, Marianne von Werfkin and Vladimir von Berichtev. At the outbreak of World War I in 1940, Franz Mark and Auguste Mack were drafted into German military service and were killed soon after. The Russian members of the group Kandinsky, Alex J. von Jolinsky and others were all forced to return home. Der Blowreiter immediately dissolved. Der Blowreiter group was also significant in lending a mystical and spiritual cause to Expressionism. This was important in shaping the work of Franz Mark and Alex J. von Jolinsky and led to the development of pure abstraction by Vasily Kandinsky. August Mack was an important member for Deblo Writer and later became the leader of another group, the Rhenish Expressionists in Bonn. The Rhenish Expressionists maintained that their thought and ideas were best portrayed through the use of form only. The only actual link between the individuals of the Rhenish camp were their choices of the subject matter and their philosophy. Following the Great War, they truly believed that all people had become merely a collective group of individuals who fell to the mercy of their society and its politics. Painters such as George Gross and Otto Dix developed a more socially critical expressionism and realism known as new socialist kit. The new objectivity. The new objectivity painters were more socially centered and were critical of the political institutions like the military. There was also a group of Austrian expressionists. Gustav Klimt was the leader of a group called the Vienna Session which sought to separate itself from the naturalist movement which is popular in the early 20th century Austria. His work is difficult to categorize but is often associated with the Symbolist and Art Nouveau. But it also has some ties to Expressionism. Oskar Kokoschka and Egan Schiele developed their own Expressionist style. Because the term Expressionism is wide in its meaning, Georges Rolt 
The French artists sometimes described as an expressionist may have influenced the Germans rather than the other way around. He learned this vivid use of color and distortion of form from Fosum and unlike his German expressionist counterparts, however, Rolt expressed an affinity for his impressionist predecessors, particularly for the work of Degas. He is well known for his devotion to religious subjects and particularly for his many depictions of the crucifixion rendered in rich color and heavy layers of paint. Another painter who was termed expressionist is Zotin. Monk was a Norwegian painter and printmaker whose intensely psychological and emotional themes was a major influence on the development of German expressionism. In the early 20th century, his painting, The Scream, is regarded as an icon of the existential anguish of the post-industrial modern age. Monk tended to focus on intense emotions such as those expressed in puberty which presents the fearful period of a girl's life as she faces the uncomfortable transition of becoming a woman. Der Sturm, German, The Storm, was a magazine covering the Expressionism movement founded in Berlin in 1910 by Howard Walden. It was published weekly until 1914 and became a quarterly in 1924 and stopped publication in 1932. This magazine played a crucial role in the development of German Expressionism. Poems and other texts of French and German Expressionists were published in this magazine. To celebrate its 100th edition in 1912, a gallery, Galerie der Stamm, was started by Walden. The gallery became the focus for Berlin's modern art scene for a decade. Here in this gallery, the Faust and Derbler writer exhibited. The expressionist artists often employed swirling, swaying and exaggeratedly executed brush strokes in the depiction of their subjects. In part, these techniques conveyed the emotional state of the artist, though they might also offer comment on modern the world. The arrival of Expressionism announced new standards in the creation and judgment of art. Art was now meant to well up from within the artist rather than deriving from a depiction of the visual world and the character of the artist's feelings became the standard for assessing the quality of a work of art rather than the composition of forms. When it came to philosophies and ideology, these expressionists shared identical views. As the term expressionist suggests, the works created by these artists were rendering of their individual and personal perceptions of their subject. Usually these paintings were done as they had actually been interpreted in the field. The use of unaltered nudes as well as a variety of other people portrayed in natural surroundings now yet tainted by the industrialization of Germany. The Die Brücke, while expressionists in theory, actually had foregone the use of broad lines and multiple layers of strong colors and instead applied their many layers of personally mixed colors. Oftentimes, these hues were thinned by petroleum in order to achieve a smoother application and to allow more freedom in their techniques. These artists were less concerned with the speed and spontaneity associated with expressionism than they were of creating works of art that would challenge and undermine the accepted taste. Thanks to the Debrouke and the revival of printmaking and the Dresden group's ambition with lithography, artists are able to reproduce their renderings at a remarkable rate and a more cost effective method is allowing their works to be enjoyed by many more people. Although most expressionists are best known as painters or sculptors, a confluence of aesthetic, social, political and commercial forces encourage nearly all of them to embrace printmaking as an equally important means of expression. Printmaking, including woodcut, indaglio and lithography, helped expressionists advance many important goals including 
pioneering formal innovations, broadly disseminating their images and ideas and promoting or criticizing social and political causes. While the woodcut with its jagged gorges and bold, flattened, primitive aesthetic become the preeminent expressionist medium, the expressionists also revitalize etching and lithography to alternately vibrant and stark effect. Adolf Hitler, outraged by such anti-German publicity impact upon his own crusade to rid Germany of all the degenerate art within his reach. This attempt to censor the openly disgruntled expressionists led to many of them fleeing to the United States. It was here that they were warmly welcomed and almost immediately a great deal of the German art was assembled in the major cities of New York. St. Louis and Chicago where they found a home in American museums. Irregardless of the attacks launched against Expressionism in 1923, regardless of Franz's refusal to acknowledge the achievements of the German artists and in spite of Hitler's crusade to rid the rage of these degenerates, the contribution of German Expressionism upon the art world cannot be discredited. After World War I, although Expressionism continued to inspire many more artists throughout Germany, the movement began to lose impetus and fragment. Already by 1918, the Dada Manifesto could claim that Expressionism no longer has anything to do with the efforts made by active people. But its ethos would have a vivid afterlife. It was crucial in the early formation of artists as different as Otto Dix and Paul Klee. And in the 1920s, it continued to inspire ambitious forays into abstraction. Kandinsky continued to create completely non-objective paintings and watercolors that emphasize color balance and archetypal forms rather than anything remotely representational or figurative. In America, Expressionism is seen in two modes. In the social realist painters like Ben Shah and later in Abstract Expressionism group. Abstract Expressionism was somewhat similar to the theories proposed by Kandinsky. Expressionism had its great impact in Germany and it continued to shape its art for decades afterwards. The emergence of George Baselitz in the 1960s and later Anselm Kaefer signaled an important and influential revival of the style which would culminate in a global neo-expressionist movement in the 1980s. But the original movement also found adherents in Russia, Belgium, Austria, France, Norway, the Netherlands and the United States. Its ideas about expression, spirituality, primitivism and the value of abstract art would also be hugely influential on an array of unrelated movements including abstract expressionism. The expressionist metaphysical outlook and their instinctive discomfort with the modern world impelled them to antagonistic attitudes which would be characteristic of various avant grades throughout the century. Because expressionism, especially German expressionism was not limited to painting, we were encouraged to watch expressionistic films. Films like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari during 1920 are significant by their expressionist spirit. The film was directed by Robert Wayne. Sets and scene artwork of expressionist films often reveal buildings of sharp ankles, great heights and crowded environments such as the frequently shown in German expressionist paintings. More than any other movement, Expressionism affected the Indian art scene from the very beginning. We can see that the mural work of Binod Bihari Mukherjee at Shantiniketan, the Hindi saints, show influences of Expressionism. Ram Kinger Beij was also Expressionistic in his approach to art. The progressive group of painters of India, formed in 1947, is a prime example of Expressionism. 
the first published manifesto even politically biased towards radical expressionism. Though the members of the group had to change their views in their second published manifesto, their language remained expressionistic. The Baroda painters of 1980s were also expressionistic in their approach. Their radical political attitude was also in par with the political attitude of German expressionists. The Kerala art from 1980s also was under the influence of expressionism till 1990s. I hope learning artistry will widen your understanding of art and help you enter and explore areas of your own creative faculty. It's time we conclude this session on Expressionism. Bye.